What's up guys, my name is Matt Beck and today on Tutorial Tuesday, we cut a face frame. What's up guys, I'm so excited to bring you guys another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're gonna be focusing on a face frame haircutting technique. But before we get into it, I wanna talk about my scissor choice for this cut. It's the Mizutani DB20, one of my favorite scissors. It's a 5.7 inch. You can see it's got a ball bearing screw and also a non-removable tang. Those are two of my favorite qualities in a scissor. Um, it's also the 5.7 inch blade, like I said. I like a little bit shorter blade for precision cutting. I don't like to go too short, so the 5.7 inch works really well for me. It's also a nano powder metal scissor, uh, which basically means that the metal in the scissor is made from the same technology that Blu-ray discs are made of. So all of the molecules in this scissor are all the same and you get a nice consistent crisp cut. It grips the hair so you get really nice precision lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do for this technique is I'm just gonna split the head in half. Um, because this is Tutorial Tuesday, I'm not gonna do a full haircut. What I wanna go over with you guys is just the face frame technique. So I split the front and back. We're gonna work on a side parting so let's pretend like the guest parts are here on the left hand side. If it was the right hand side, just do the opposite. Now we're working with a thicker, uh, more dense side. So that would be the heavy side. And then we're working with a light side. Now what I wanna talk to you guys about is the different angles first. So if you see where 90 degrees is, is where my comb is coming straight out from the head. So anytime I'm lifting the hair, the key to a perfect face frame is all about elevation. So you're gonna notice I really focus on the elevation throughout this cut. Now my fingers are parallel to the parting. So I have a, um, a diagonal forward parting and then my fingers mimic that angle and I start my cut. Now this is gonna be based on how long you want the bangs to be. So make sure that you don't go too short if you don't want shorter bangs. Now I clip the other side away and I continue working up the head. Now I'm gonna keep showing you guys where 90 degrees is because then I want to create a perfect angle of a zero degree uh, elevation. So I find out where 90 is and then I elevate the hair to zero. Now anything below zero is just going to fall as dead weight. So a lot of you guys that have cut a face frame in the past and had a challenge with it being too heavy, the reason it's too heavy is because of the fact that you're uh, your elevation is way too low for the density that you're working with. So let's say we're working with medium density then I'm going to go through her hair and keep it at that zero degree angle all the way through. Now also notice how I just took that section. Now we're working wider than my fingers are. So I break it up because I'm working on the top of the head here so I get that zero degree elevation there. Then I move to the lower part of the head which is a completely different angle. So anytime I'm cutting hair I'm really focused on the head shape and where my elevation is and that's gonna give me the best result in the end. So I just work my way through there. I break that section up into two. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So basically a long parietal ridge, bring all of that over, cut it at zero degrees. And again, when I say zero, a lot of you guys might get confused because a lot of people think zero is just all the way to the floor. Now that depends on how you were taught to cut hair. But for me, it always worked in my mind to know where 90 is on the head and go zero off of that. So just bringing everything over, stationary guide, the only difference is we shift our elevation as we work through the head shape and that will give us the most even and best result for a face frame. Now I clip away the heavy side and I'm gonna work on the light side. Now, a lot of people are taught when they cut a face frame to cut it exactly the same, keep everything identical, keep it symmetrical. Well, if you're working with a light side and you're working with a heavy side, then on the light side, I keep my elevation nice and low because what does low elevation do? It builds up weight. And the fact is on her light side, I want her to have a buildup of weight. I want it to feel a little bit heavier because then when she goes to style it, even though both sides are asymmetrical, they feel symmetrical. You can see how that layer and movement works. Now I'm gonna go in with Paul Mitchell Neuro Style Prime. This is a blow dry primer. It's a heat protectant. So any of you guys looking for a nice heat protectant, it makes the hair smooth and silky. That's a great product. Also, this is the Paul Mitchell Neuro Halo Dryer. It's a brand new blow dryer. It's only my second video using it. Um, it's a really powerful blow dryer. Um, it's got all digital on the top so you can work the different heat settings, ion settings, all of that 
works through the top of the blow dryer. So I go through, I do a flat wrap technique um, using my Ergo paddle brush, and then I go in with the brand new Neuro Halo um, iron to smooth the hair out. The cool thing about this iron is as soon as you fire it up, it's all digital. So it's all touch panel, uh, just like the blow dryer. So it's really cool, very futuristic, uh, cool little tool that you can get if you want to on paulmitchell.com. Now I go through, I iron it out. I keep everything nice and smooth, just following the head shape. And as you can see, I take nice tight tension. You'll see it right here, just like I'm gonna cut it to go through and do my iron work. That gives me the smoothest result possible. So here we go, just finishing it up. I use a little bit of Paul Mitchell Express Style Stay Strong. It's a really firm hold hairspray. Just to finish off the style and really set it so you guys can see the result. What I want you guys to notice is right around the cheek, um, where that density usually is the heaviest, because of the elevation that we did throughout the haircut, that's why you're seeing it nice and smooth and consistent all the way throughout it. You don't see any part of this haircut that feels heavier because we did the right elevation throughout the cut. If you guys like this video, then please hit the subscribe button below. Also, make sure you hit that like button. And remember, if you're looking for some new Mizutani scissors, then go to freesaloneducation.com. We have the best deals on the internet. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Yeah.